Hey guys, Tim McCamus uh, back in the shop again. Going to extend our fabrication series of videos here. So uh, we touched on a little tubing uh, welding and uh, kind of some do's and don'ts and how to how to fill some gaps and how to do a couple other things. So um, to expand on that, um, you know, there's a lot of tubes that get fit on the chassis and there's a lot of uh, welding in, in out of position areas, but there's also a lot of brackets and tabs that need to be attached for suspension, mounting of accessories, steering rack, uh, four link brackets, shock tabs. I mean, there's just a million little tabs that gets put on these things to, uh, to mount different uh, parts of the, of the system. You got to mount the steering column, you got to mount the seat. So you get, there's a variety of different shapes of tabs and, and, um, and, and plate and sheet metal and so the, you know, you'll, you'll have some sheet metal on the driver's side floor. You need to weld that floor in on the driver's side. Sometimes you might put a steel firewall in. We put a lot of titanium firewalls in, but if you put a steel firewall in, you might want to weld that in around the edge. And, um, but definitely the driver's floor pan has to, be, um, has to be steel and it needs to be 028 or thicker. Um, but uh, I'm going to touch on a little bit of that um, uh, tab welding and sheet plate and stuff like that. So. I'll do a little quick uh, quick summary. So, just to let's go with fitment first. Um, so, if we're going to start with some tabs, uh, I grabbed a couple of uh, I grabbed a couple eighth inch tabs that we just had laying around the shop here. And so, this is a laser cut tab that is right out of the bin. And this is one that I put a little bevel on really quick. So you can kind of see from the end there; it's got a little bevel on it. So. You know, one of the things you want to do to do a nice job is if you're welding this tab on, particularly like if this tab is going to stand up straight on this tube, then there's nothing to do to it. It's ready to go. You might want to take a little grinder and just clean that up and, and polish that edge there and get that, uh, that kind of that slag where the lasers cut it right there. You might want to knock that off so it'll make your weld a lot nicer. But for that, you could just stand that thing up or you could stand it up here and cross this tube, you know, so you've got a nice fit. But if that's going to go flush, so let's say there's two of these and there's one here and one here. So you can, you can hold that up like this. Let me show you from this side and flush that out. So let's say that's going to be out there and it's going to be flush. You've got a fairly large gap to fill right here. And what's going to happen is unless you pour a lot of rod to it and put a big weld on there, the weld is going to be kind of uh, sunken in. It's going to look uh, like it's a little gutter down through there. So what we would do in a, in a situation like that is we'd bevel that thing so we've got a little bit of a tighter fit and let it flush out on that tube so that the weld, I mean this is, you know, if you're building a stock car, this is fine because you can just wire feed the piece of crap on there. But uh, if you're building a nice 4130 chassis car that you're proud of, you want to fit this stuff a little nicer. So, you know, it's quick and easy to hold this up there and the results are going to be the same, but you're going to have a large gap to fill. It's going to get a lot of heat in there and a lot of rod. It's not going to look very good. This type of fit would be much better. Um, and again, you know, talking about flush or tangent with a tube, you know, this is not flush, this is not flush, okay? It's when it's flush and tangent, that means it's zero with that outside diameter of that tube. Same way with a floor, uh, if we were gonna put a piece of sheet metal in for the floor, we don't want it here, we don't want it under here where it's down, we want it flush, we want it right to center there. And you'll see I made some marks on here. Um, so if, if something's not gonna get welded solid, it needs to be laid out so that the welds are spaced evenly and they look appropriate to what you're going to do. So our common spacing is a one inch weld and then a two inch space. So it's a weld an inch, skip two inches, weld an inch. And that's what I've done here. I've just quickly laid out an inch, spaced it out two, and then another inch. So if this was a you know, 25 inch, 26 inch long floor pan, I'd have that laid out appropriately all around there. And I'd lay it out so I started in the corners and ended up in the corners and didn't just like start from one side and let it end up where it ends up. I mean, take your time and lay it out so it's um, symmetrical from side to side so that it doesn't look like you just started here and went in a circle and ended up wherever it ended up. So take a little time and, and lay it out appropriately and the end product will look a lot nicer. 
So if I'm going to put this piece on, this is pretty thin, um, and if you if you want to make it nice and tight, um, you can do a couple things. You can hem this edge, like which means you can double break it, so you can mark this like a quarter inch and hem that over and flatten it, and it'll give you a little more um, material to weld to. It won't be such a flat edge, and it won't want to pull up when you weld it. Um, but it's also going to stick up a little more. So if you're doing a firewall or something and you've got a long run of it, you might want to consider double breaking that edge. But on a floor pan, like on the driver's side floor, we're going to put the, um, the floor stiffener strips in there. And those pieces are uh, chrome molly that are broken in a 90 and they're scalloped out. And they actually, um, they will weld on the inside and then break over and then there's going to be some 632 screws that go in there so we're going to we're going to weld this out here but then we're going to put these floor strips in there and what that does is that's going to take all the vibration from this and keep it from getting to that weld so um, if you just weld this uh, in the perimeter eventually the vibration from the engine is going to crack these welds and it'll crack this uh, plate out here it actually won't crack the weld it'll crack around the weld and then you'll have to go back in and re-weld this after you've powder coated or painted the chassis. So these little floor strips go in here and they break over and then you'll just drill through there and put 632 button heads in there. And then the same way down here on this edge, um, you're going to lay out the welds in a similar fashion here. Mark an inch and skip two and weld that along there and let that flush out on the bottom of that floor pan. And then what that does gives you provides you a nice stiff surface and it keeps the vibration out because you've got a, a long open area in here that um, will not be after it's welded you'll be able to feel the vibration from the engine and well that's eventually going to work on this material on the edge so again uh, we we have those in uh, long strips and you just cut them to length and they're scalloped out and they look really nice and you can just weld them along the bottom side of that tube in the center and it'll really prolong the life of the floors so uh, again, uh, laying this stuff out is, is really, um, it's a quick step that makes a lot nicer project. Uh, beveling these tabs, this one's beveled a bit much for me. I, this, this is just the way this was when I picked it up. I wouldn't have quite beveled it to a point. I would have left it, have some flat here so that I had just a little bit more. But if I'm totally flushing this out, it's not going to matter because I'm going to weld it inside and out too. Um, I'm not going to skip this. I'm going to weld this on solid. Um, again, this is a, a little thicker piece of material. Uh, same way, if I'm welding this along here to mount something to, I'm still going to lay these out. I would lay this out where, if this is the length, I would mark an inch on each end, then split the center and mark another inch. So my, I'm not going to have that two inch spacing in between there, but I'm going to have them laid out evenly. So. I would mark my inch on this end, inch on this end, find the center, and mark a half inch on each side so that I have uh, the welds spaced out evenly. Okay, so let's say this is like uh, probably around uh, five and a half inches or so, so it's five and three quarters. You know, so I'm going to mark an inch on each end, pick up the center, and then lay that out an inch in the center so I have a nice looking finish. So um, real quick, uh, back on the floor pieces, if... Uh, one of the things that's important is to um, is to tack this in properly before you want to weld it and we would uh, we would do what's called a zip tack where we're just going to zap that right there with a little bit of heat all the way around there and kind of fusion tack that into place so that when you go to weld it that it doesn't pull up because if you just start here and start welding across here it's laying nice and flat now but the heat is going to stretch this metal and by the time you get to the end, it's going to be sticking up a little bit. So then you'll have a gap under here and you're going to want to hammer that down and then it's going to be sticking up. It's going to look like shit. So, so you want that to lay flat, tack that all the way around um, with a little zip tack. And uh, as you start welding that, um, again, we're going to pour the argon to it so it keeps it nice and cool and doesn't let the metal warp up. So um, I'll... Uh, I'll just give you a little heads up here with this and tack this on and show you what I'm talking about. I'm using my foot pedal over here for my amperage control. So Okay, so you can see all I did was make a little zip tack on there 
didn't use any rod. I just burned the, the metal edge into the tube to hold that tight. So then when I go back, put some weld on there, it'll be nice and flat. Okay, I've got a little bit too big a rod, so I just grabbed a 16th rod because I had it laying here. Um, I would normally, for if I didn't double break this, I'd use an 045 rod just because it'll, uh, it won't have so much weld uh, content there. So this, this again, you can see is a little too big uh, of a rod. Um, that's what I had laying on the table. But, uh, you know, I still got good color to the weld. You can see here as I was moving when I stopped, you know, the argon coverage is kind of shaped like that cup because I was aiming it more down this way. And that will be a nice weld there and it'll be nice and strong. And then I can come back underneath here with that floor strip that's gonna be broke at a 90 and weld that along here and then fit it to the corner and then come back and drill those 632s in there and then bolt that down. And that'll keep that vibration from getting over here to the to the edge of the material and cracking it. So again, on this piece here, if I was gonna put this on, you can, you can also, you can zip tack this also, just to hold it into place. Got that straight, and I'm gonna go ahead and tack this in. And I'm gonna use a little rod down here. And so after you got it tacked into place, um, you wanna check it for, for straightness. So I just got it eyeballed up there, it's pretty straight with the edge. Now, if I just, uh, if I just go here and burn this in, um, that tab's probably gonna pull a little bit. So what I would do first is kind of wrap this end with some weld just to hold that in place. And then I'd come back and weld the top side. So I'd come here on the end and just wrap a little bit around that. Now I can take off from where I'm at here. So that's what it should look like. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, but at the end, uh, when I stopped, I just tapered off with my pedal so that I could kind of uh, pull my heat and not just end it abruptly. So I had about a 50% pedal through here. And then as I got to the end, I backed off of that and, and let it the amperage cool down until I could pull it off there. So you almost see the, the, the arc diminish down smaller and smaller and you kind of keep in the puddle there and swirl it around and then it just goes away and it leaves you a nice finish so that you can pick back up uh, from that point and continue on um, if you just shut the pedal off in the middle of a bead like that sometimes you'll get a little pocket in there a little pit in the center 
and then when you start back up it'll fill that crater in and go and it doesn't look like it continues on so it's nice to kind of taper that off and uh, and and let it finish up that way you should kind of do that on all the wells but I kept the argon coverage uh, consistent on that so you get that nice um, nickel color to it and doesn't look all gray and uh, so that's what you're looking for there a nice consistent bead that is you know straight down the side so the puddles all the same down through there and your dips are fairly consistent and uh, this will provide a nice solid finish for that uh, that tab attachment I don't want to show you just what good weld should look like I'm gonna continue this I'm gonna start from this end here I'm gonna weld down a little bit I'm gonna get this too hot I'm gonna weld it too hot and show you what it looks like if it doesn't have enough rod in it um, just so you can kind of compare it to this because we see a lot of different stuff I mean we get cars here all the time and we see some some things that are probably not uh, um, they're kind of a little bit iffy on the way they were attached so uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what the welds look like when they're when they're not proper I'm gonna go ahead and, and burn this up and, and show you what that is so just give me a second here and I'll Okay, so even though this doesn't look too bad, it's kind of, if you know how to do it, it's kind of hard to make it shitty. So um, this well doesn't look consistently horrible, but it's way too hot. Okay, so you can kind of look at the finish on this weld here and you can see this, this well here. Now, structurally, this is not detrimental. It's, it's, it's strength is going to be excellent, but it, it's burned into the tube. And the reason it's kind of this flat, kind of grayish color is because it's pulling a lot of the base metal up out of the tab in the tube into the weld. Where this is mostly rod, this is a lot of the tube and the, and the uh, tab pulled up into there. So it's kind of hard to weld this because it's trying to burn that edge away. Um, you know, structurally you could get by with this. I didn't sink it into the tube too hard. You can see down here it was starting to get too deep, but this color is not what you want. This is way too hot, and you can see that the tab on this end is extremely hot, and there's a lot of color way out here compared to, to this weld, which is has hardly, it is very minimal heat here in the tab, where this tab is, is hot all the way out to this edge. So again, there's plenty of rod here, and there's good coverage, but this weld is way too hot. Um, and you can see I stopped at the end and just pulled away. There's that little that little divot I was telling you about, that little crater hole that's kind of full of shit right there. It's kind of got some slaggy stuff in it. So when you start back up from there, it's going to want to bubble and piss up right there around that center. But um, this is too hot. This is good. This is not good. So try to shoot for something that looks like this. That's all I'm out for today.